Accuracy is on a sliding scale. Now, what the heck does that mean? Okay, so being accurate is super important in sports. So in other words, the worst volleyball hitters just whack the ball in the middle of the court, and by not missing the court and giving up points automatically, they think they're doing well. Now, that's not true. <laughs> People that are very good do pretty precise things at times. And so their accuracy is something that they are very concerned with. But they don't always have to be perfect. So what we want to talk about today is how accuracy can change over time. You can call something accurate in different versions of different plays and still be accurate or not. So let's get on with this. A sliding scale, what does that mean? It means it changes. So let's say that we're setting a volleyball. Okay, we're setting a volleyball to the outside here. Now, you might think that only a perfect set is accurate. And this is not true because there are different things that might happen to you. So you might get a great pass, in which case in volleyball, we're supposed to better the ball with every contact. So in other words, if we get an eh pass, we're looking for a good set. But if we get a good pass, we are looking for a great set. So if you get something served up to you on a silver platter, and that's when you should probably be pretty accurate in order to have categorized what you did as accurate or hitting your target. Now, how often do you setters actually get a great pass that's no problem to deal with? Well, not very often. And so accuracy can change. What we need is a hittable ball. It would be great to have a perfect set all the time, but that is unreasonable to expect. Just like it's unreasonable to expect a great pass all the time or a great hit after you've set it. So accuracy being on a sliding scale, setters, as that ball makes you move around, we would still like a very hittable ball, but you should not be worried about hitting some perfect target. As the ball makes you move more, your target should get more general. So in other words, let's say I had a good pass. Ooh, that G is harsh. Let's say I had a good pass. Your target might be that big. Let's say I had no okay pass. Your target might turn to something more like that big. Might have gone from a two foot target to a four foot target. Let's say you had a bad pass. Your target might be anywhere near the outside hitter inside the 10 foot line that's not right against the net. And those are all accurate given what you had to deal with. And so accuracy being on a sliding scale, part of this is kind of like it's permission to not be perfect. It's permission to not feel like you have to aim for relatively perfect things because you're not that good. And it's not that I'm talking to you. I know you hear this from me a lot. Nobody is that good. The people that are better than you have just learned when it's okay to back off on their expectations and what they're aiming for. We always need a hittable ball. And so what people that aren't that good do is they aim for perfect or very close to it almost all the time, thinking that they can hit it, which they are wrong about. And then they end up doing something bad in an attempt to be good. Remember, never do anything bad in an attempt to be good. That's what this is talking about. When you get this bad pass, do not aim for this tiny little target. Aim for the big one. As you get more amazing, you'll know. As you get more amazing, instead of a target that big, on a bad pass, you may be able to do a target that big. I don't know. You're going to have to do the research and figure it out yourself. I'm just giving you permission to not be perfectly accurate all the time because all of these situations call for different versions of different size targets and you can still call yourself accurate.